Hey everyone, it's Dr. Jason West with a special guest, Gina, on the Thursday Night Live podcast, live cast. We're on YouTube and Facebook, and it's really fun to have someone that's actually in the office and seeing what's happened with the patients. And she said, hey, I'll do this. Just don't embarrass me or ask me questions that I don't know. I promised her I wouldn't do that. So if you're just joining us, it's a, the Thursday Night Live cast, and this is what it's like to peel back the curtain and see what's happening inside of the office. And so I'm with Gina. Gina started off in the office doing some stuff on the front, and now she kind of runs the back part of the office, and our team loves her, and the patients love her. And it's kind of fun to just take someone that is actually in the trenches and being able to get some observations. And so the, one of the things that we see on our website, everybody wants to know what's it like to be at the team and, and, and really what's happening behind the proverbial curtain. And so, Gina, you've had some experience in healthcare yes. before you got to the office. So tell us a little bit about your journey to the extent that you're comfortable of what it was like before you got the office and then and how did we line up? How did you come about working at the West Clinic? So I started off in healthcare. I so I didn't know I was gonna end up in healthcare, but I took care of my grandma and from there I just I decided to go for my CNA and then from there my phlebotomy license and then I worked at a family medicine clinic and now well, I guess I've done a few jobs but so you were in a couple jobs in healthcare, and then how did you end up at, at the clinic? It wasn't an ad that Misty put out. I think that's how we yes, connected, right? Yeah, it was. I it was actually on Indeed, and it just said come in for bring your resume and come in for an interview. And so, I I actually wasn't going to, but I just I just decided to give it a shot, and here I am. Okay, so <laughs> um, everybody likes to know what it's like, you know, to work with the people in the office. And one of the things that we do with patients is like we break a lot of rules. And what I mean by that is we hug our patients, we shake hands, we want to know about you know, what's happening in their life and, and what their treatment goals are. And so for people out there that want to know a little bit about Gina, we just have some fun questions to ask. So Gina, tell me a color you like. Um, pink. And what do you like to eat? Um, tacos. And what do you like to drink? Uh, Coke Zero. <laughs> okay, and then some of the hobbies that you have. Um, what do you like so to do for fun? I, so I like to go swimming, but I, I like to cook. That's okay. probably the biggest hobby I have. And, and name a movie you like. Um, I actually like reality TV, so okay. I like to watch and then TV shows. a book or author that you like? Um, so... Morning Comes Softly. I so it was a favorite book of mine, but I it, I can't remember her name. That sounds so bad. <laughs> All right, so Morning Comes Softly, and I ask this to so many patients that come into the office because about ten years we I had a, one of those epiphany bridges that occurred, and what that means is I was doing a workup on a patient that had a really serious complex medical condition, and. And as we were finishing up the medical interview point, which we were trying to figure out, you know, what's wrong with her? What are the questions that she might have? What is her journey like through healthcare? And, and I said, do you have any questions or comments? And she says, yes, don't treat me like a number. Um, I don't want to be that way. I want you to be like I'm your wife, your sister, your favorite cousin. And I realized if I don't know people very well, then I can't serve them to my best ability. And so that's kind of the funny thing that we do at the office and real quick, my favorite color is blue. I love prime rib and, and chicken enchiladas. I really like strawberry milkshakes uh, is my favorite thing, even though that's not the healthiest thing. I love riding dirt bikes as a hobby. And my favorite movie is The Princess Bride. And my favorite author is me. I've written a couple <laughs> books, and so I really like to share that with people. So as we're thinking about you know, how we can help people the best, we wanted to create a great place to work so that we can deliver on the patient experience. And as Gina has been involved in healthcare, in phlebotomy, and CNA, and in different healthcare institutions, she joined our team just a couple months ago. And Gina, what is kind of the aha moment in, at the West Clinic? Because it's always our goal. It's my team, team's goal. Like, once you sign on with us, it's the last job that we want you to have. We recognize that that may not be re feasible or maybe a stepping stone to something else. But an aha moment that you had joining the West Clinic team was what? I would have to say 
um, patients' stories after, I mean, I just seen, I guess, patients coming to me and telling me that we saved their life. You saved their life. It is really an aha moment for me. It's, it's actually really rewarding. It's really rewarding. We, we don't, I don't feel like we have a job. We come together. We have something really special. We have a team meeting every morning where we work through, you know, what is important, what, how we can serve people better, what's something to remember, what's something that people are worried about. And, and Gina, I like to think that our team meetings are different than any, anything else you've been. And I, I don't know if that's true. I hope it's true. But it's tell true. us about the team meeting environment and how we try to support each other in helping people. So I love the communication we all have um, and how we get along. It's, it's so nice and everybody's so positive. It's, it's great. I, I think it, the communication is the biggest and the respect that we have for one another. So Gina started off on the front answering phones, helping people get uh, oriented, and then she's like, hey, I want to do some more inpatient care. And so I'm kind of calling her our back office coordinator. Back office means somewhere the rubber hits the road on some of the treatments. And so I, I took a picture of some of the equipment that we have in the office, and I said, Gina, I'll explain it to you. I just want to or explain it to everyone. And then you kind of take me some of your you know, responses that you've seen patients give us. But the first picture we're going to talk about, everyone, is this is a long wave ultrasound. A long wave ultrasound means that we have the long waves coming out, not short wave ultrasound. So it's not just heat. It actually penetrates two to four inches and vibrates the cells. It's like a cellular massage. Mm -hmm. And it looks ancient because it is ancient. <laughs> it's probably 80 or 90 years old. But Gina, your experience, like I saw you working with, you know, Will's ankle on this today, but you've seen it work on people. And what is some of the responses people give you when we give them this machine? It feels so good. <laughs> That's probably the biggest response. But I mean, I get a lot of people that specifically ask for the ultrasound because they, it, it just after an injection, it's, it's like they're in heaven. So. And so in it's, this, it's really nice. In this little video clip, you can see Gina's working on uh, one of our, our patients, uh, Will. He's got some chronic ankle problems. And again, an ultrasound. This is one of the secret sauce things that we have inside the office. And yes, there's a lot of people that have an ultrasound. Like, that's not really that unique. But this ultrasound is different because it's a long wave ultrasound. The next thing that we're talking about, you guys, this is a picture of an acoustic sine wave or what we call a Rife machine. And this is something that I assigned to Gina to help people because it's based on resonance frequency. And resonance frequency, what it does, it, it has a really nice energy medicine effect. It was developed by a gentleman named Royal Rife um, 80, 90 years ago. And what it does is it, it gives it basically a perpendicular wave Every living thing has an energy about them. And typically the energy is in a vibrating sequence. It's vibrating this way and then what sine wave comes in this way or the acoustic sine wave Rife machine comes in this way and kind of what it does is it reorganizes or uses harmonic frequencies to basically change physiology. And you just have to be within about a four foot range for this machine to have its effect. And Gina, I don't think you've seen this anywhere else. No, and no, when, a lot of the therapies I haven't. <laughs> and this machine, when people get inside of the field, what's some of the responses that people have when they're using the Rife machine? Um, I have, it's relaxing for one, because it's a red light and it's just calming. And I mean, I just get a lot of people that are really relaxed when I go in, so. So there's all these different settings. So if you guys are just joining us, it's the Thursday Night Live podcast. Dr. Jason West and the West Clinic team. And we've got Gina, who's our back office manager that's helping coordinate with patient care. We've asked her about what brought her to the office and then also some of the fun things to know about. And she said that she likes to drink soda. So we're gonna <laughs> gotta let her like, I guess we'll forgive her for that. But we appreciate her being genuine and authentic. And we're talking about different machines in, in the office. And then this picture, we call it the muscle grab, grabber machine. And it, I should have put a flash on the camera when I was taking this picture because this is one of my favorites. And, and this is what it does, is it, it really helps to break up muscle spasms and this massages organs. Now, what does that mean? It means that we create a current, we put these pads on like either the liver or the stomach, or uh, we've even done some lung fields, a lot of muscle things. And when people get a, 
a back that is just really spasm and stuff like that. This electrical thing, what it does is it comes in and it ramps up and then it eases off. And it ramps up and eases off. So we call the sign massage machine. It's really close to 100 years old. Um, eventually it's not going to work. We've, we've had three of these. Two of them have, you know, basically conked out. Um, this one I use multiple times a day. When it doesn't work anymore, because you can't get components, it has drums and other stuff in it. It doesn't have uh, fuses you know, or a motherboard or anything else. You're going to see a grown man cry. The grown man <laughs> is me. I will cry when this machine doesn't work. But I love using this for kidney stones. Like it, when, when the stone is in the kidney and then it drops down into the ureter, it has like a cockle burn. It makes the, the um, uh, ureter just spasm like it just hurts. And when you put the current on it where you have that ramp on and ramp off, what it does is it gets the smooth muscle to relax, the stone will drop. That's what I originally was using it for. And, uh, and Gina, I use this all the time. I'm always telling you to hook people up to this. And so what are some of the conditions or feedback for people when they get on this machine? So they're, <laughs> at first they're like, they jump. <laughs> but after the therapy, they, they say it really relaxes them, so and it again, actually it, does help relax their muscles. If we can get the muscles to rack, whether it's skeletal muscle, which is you know your biceps and your back muscles and your leg muscles, like if we can get those to relax, a lot of pain will go away. But also the smooth muscle, which again, stomach, intestines. I use this a lot for bladder conditions, and uh, people look at it and think, oh my gosh, which medieval castle <laughs> did this come from? And then the next thing, this is called an RTMS. An RTMS stands for a Rapid Transmagnetic Stimulation Therapy. Um, it's a little crown thing that goes around your head. I've actually got a picture of me on this and, uh, and my wife on this because I think that this massages the brain. We do this right after the Theta Pod, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. And uh, Gina is running this for us, in, and we're fortunate, like we haven't had to call the ambulance for anybody that she's worked on. And <laughs> of course, I'm teasing because this is really kind of a benign uh, therapy, but we get people out of the Theta Pod, which helps to break up addiction patterns, and then we move them to the RTMS. And so again, like the RTMS, I use it as a, as a brain massage. It's really good for uh, post-traumatic stress disorders. I like it for ADD, ADHD. I like it for anxiety. I like it for depression. And so, Gina, what are you seeing when people are hooked up to our Saturday Night Live skit with a little crown thing goes around them? Um, so a lot of people feel more awake, but I'm, I'm going to be honest, it does give a few people headaches. Okay, and so, why, why do you think it gives them headaches? I, for In my opinion, I think it's just stimulating their brain, but it they're like little weights, so it's a little heavy on their head. <laughs> All right, and just so everybody, I want everybody to relax honest. for a minute. Yes, I appreciate her being honest. There's a way for us to manage the headaches. So, but a lot of it is because that magnet therapy is affecting, this is what I think is happening, is the heavy metals in the system, it's relocating them from one area to another therapy or area. And so heavy metals really like fat tissue. And so when we move those, you go from an area the body's used to and it starts to move into circulation and then a lot of headaches come from the circulatory system, the vascular system particularly, and then what happens is we get that out of the system. So wh what does that mean? If your body is like a clogged toilet, the only way to get the cl clogged toilet to drain is you got to stir it up. And so we stir it up with some magnet therapy. As we continue to do these, the headaches get less and less, but it is one of those uh, side effects that we see. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the advanced application of oxidative medicine. And, and this is my favorite thing to do in the office. And I say that about every therapy because I, I got a lot of good outcomes for this. But here's what's important about oxidative medicine is if you have enough oxygen in the body, then you don't build up acid. What happens is you get energy, and I think when people lose energy, that's when bad things happen. So, Gina, you haven't been exposed to ozone therapy until we got to the office, right? right. Like it wasn't. Yeah, any I've, ne I've never even heard of it. And so, when we brought that. it in and we said, "Hey, we're going to do, you know, ozone therapy," um, what was some of your first thoughts of like, "Okay, I know he's lost it. He, they're crazy," but. Like, you, you got to admit, there's been some pretty amazing stories with the ozone. Oh, yes. I first, when I heard about insufflation, 
that's one that I was like, what? It goes where? But, but so it actually is. Let me, let me explain. <laughs> so, insufflation is a way to get advanced oxygen or three molecules of oxygen into the body. And what it does is then it converts back to O2, and then you have an O minus that's looking for things to bind up to. And so basically, it's, we believe it's reducing free radicals. And one of the best ways to get into the body is to use the third lung, also known as the colon. So we fill up either a syringe or a bag full of about 99% you know, oxygen, a little bit of ozone. You hook it to a catheter, and then you insufflate it, which means you put a little bit of lube on a catheter, you insert it up the rectum in the colon. Now it's kind of socially awkward to talk about. Like I get it, and especially there are certain type of species on the earth, AKA men that'll be like, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, fine, then be sick. Actually, that's what I think of every time that they say it. But when your body is able to absorb that oxygen through the colon, like there is some dramatic things that happen. It doesn't hurt. It's really safe, it's super effective. Yes, it's socially awkward to talk about it. And so when Gina was saying, when they first told me about uh, insufflation, I was like, what? It goes where? Why are you doing that? But we get to the point where people request it. Oh yes, oh yes. Ozone water too. It's actually really popular. So if we can get extra oxygen in the body, the, the two main therapies that we do at the office, vitamin C, getting electro electrons into the body, and that helps charge up the energy. And then oxygen helps to reduce pyruvate lactic acid. If oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, which is a mouthful, that just means if we have adequate oxygen after we make energy, the byproduct is water and carbon dioxide and energy. If we don't, then it, we go into a different pathway. So ozone therapy, insufflation, um, talk about the ear insufflation, like, cause I have you do that a lot for people too. So what's that? The ear ozone? Yes, the ear ozone. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's actually really annoying. It's an annoying sound, but I had a patient today actually say that it really worked with one try. So, so what she's talking actually, Sorry. <laughs> what she's talking about is we hook up a tube to a little stethoscope. It goes into the ear, and it sounds like you're in an ear tunnel. But what we're trying to do is to push some oxygen through the tympanic membrane and get it basically into the central nervous system and some other things. And, and do I know exactly how it's going right to the brain? Well, I don't think it's doing that, but I've seen a lot of tinnitus ringing the ears and balance problems and brain fog, memory conditions improve with the ear insulation therapy. Mm -hmm. so then Same then, with sinus. Yes, oh, so, so there's a way that, I, and I forgot to talk about this. this. See, this is when you hire people smarter than you. They always make you look it. So like this is a perfect <laughs> no. example of that. What Gina was saying is if you take some ozone therapy, there's a specifically a way to get it into the sinuses that's really good for chronic sinus infection. So a lot of our patients come into the office and they've tried the medical approach, they've tried repeated antibiotic therapy, and it's not getting them where they wanna be, and so we take a little syringe of ozone, we take a butterfly catheter, we cut the end off so that there's nothing sharp, there's no needle attached. We put the, the plastic tubing up into the nose here. We have people um, hold off the, excuse me, block off their nose, uh, take a deep breath in, you get a little bit of ozone in there, and that ozone will kill chronic bacterial infections. Sometimes it's as fast as one treatment, sometimes it takes some repeated uh, treatments, but it's a non traumatic way. And then we have people hold that oxygen ozone mixture in their nose, their sinuses, as long as possible, breathe out their mouth. You don't want to get ozone around the lungs because it's an irritant and makes you cough. As long as you're breathing out your mouth, then you breathe out of your nose and guess what? It's a really nice consideration from chronic sinus problems and um, allergies and sinusitis and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And brings your smell back. Brings your smell back. So a lot of people have had infections where they've lost their sense of taste and smell. And this is one of the treatments that seems to be helping people. You know, yes, we tried on people and they, it hasn't been as you know, effective as they were hoping it to be, but it's almost always helped some people. So the next therapy we're talking about is brain tap. So brain tap is something that helps to reprogram the nerve impulse of your brain and it helps to stimulate it to rewire your sinus pa synaptic pathways, not your sinuses, your synaptic pathways. And, it, and we're always looking for new treatments and new modalities. We ran in this about a year ago and, 
and Gina helps us to coordinate this. So uh, tell us what you know about BrainTap. Um, so it, it, it's <laughs> like a meditation is what it is. I mean, what I see, and I get a lot of patients that relax, are really relaxed afterward, but I have one patient that said that, because we did something for cravings, and she said it actually really helps, so I was really impressed. So with the brain tap, it's just helping again. To, it's not necessarily a brain massage like the RTMS therapy, but what it does do is it helps to just soothe the, the basically the windows of the soul, which is the eyes, and then you have the ear, the, the phones that come on, so you got an auditory response, and then there's all these different programs that the inventors put together, and it just helps to really calm down overactive brains. So if you're one of those people that really struggles to go to sleep at night, you can't turn off, you got a little woodpecker in there saying, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, gotta do this, then brain tap is a consideration the next thing we're talking about is the photonics machine, and I'm not gonna have Gina talk about this because it's so new at the office. It's just something we've put together. We talked with Misty last week about it. We she actually demoed it where we take a red light, a green light, a magenta, and a blue light, and we have these little probes. You put them underneath the tongue, and what it does is it the, gets that energy around the sublingual artery in the sublingual vein. We're seeing some really fun things like that, and then going to the next therapy is the light therapy. Now, there's a whole bunch of different light therapies we do in the office. There's the ultraviolet therapy that we put inside of the vein. There's the, the light therapy with the pads. There's the red bed. This is the cold laser therapy. This is me kind of goofing around. I'm actually trying to put the laser on the wonderful point, which is one of the ear acupuncture points. But I love this therapy because it penetrates in the skin and it helps the body, at least this is what we think is happening, to stimulate the ATP energy, which is the powerhouse of the cell, and it helps basically for that thing to occur. So Gina, what do you, what do you see when people are doing the, this laser therapy? Um, it's actually really quick. So I mean, it, it just, to me, it's healing, the, it's healing from the inside out, and so. If that makes sense. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's really good for tendonitis. It's really good for muscle sprains and and, um, and and really good for chronic muscle injuries. That's one of the things we use it for. It's also good for things like bone spurs and chronic ligament. I mean, when I say good for it, it just seems to really help people to heal. It's what we add to our arsenal of treatments. And if you guys are just joining us, it's the Dr. Jason West Live at Five series every Thursday on our Facebook and our YouTube channel. We also have an archive. We're, we've done about 30 different shows uh, this year. Uh, Gina's uh, joined us this week. We've had Tasia on, we've had Misty on. Gina helps to run the back office and she really helps to coordinate our modalities of what we can do. So you walk in the office, on the right side, we do all of our vitamin infusion therapy. On our left side, we do injection therapy and then in the back, we do a lot of modality therapy, which has been a huge part of the office for the last 105 years. And we're almost done talking about the modalities, but one of the fun things to talk about is the light therapy. So we have a light therapy, we have two types. Actually, there's a whole bunch of types, but the two main types we're talking about is one's called the red bed, and then two is something called the pad therapy. So these pads that you can see up here on the screen, one of them goes on your stomach, one of them goes on your back, one around goes your eyes, and then there's a little pad that we could use to uh, the dragon treatment. And the dragon is where you hurt or your main complaint. For some people it's the bladder, some people it's the knee, the ankle. Um, anyway, we take, put that other light system where the chief concern is. And then we have all of these different programs. And, and, and Gina, we hook up, we hook people to this all the time. Every day. And then what do you see when, when people get on this? Well, they fall asleep. <laughs> Almost always. Because it's it gets so, warm. Yes, it gets warm. <laughs> it's relaxing. And what it does is, is there's one part of the light therapy that goes around your eyes. And obviously, we want you to close your eyes when you do that. And of course, when people close their eyes and they don't move, I, I have a patient that's like, you know, I drive six hours from Montana to your office just so that I can sleep with that light therapy. I sleep so well. I feel so recharged. It's, it's a 20 minute treatment. And Gina, do you see anything else uh, when people do the, the pad therapy? Yeah, it's helped a lot with pain. 
it, from what I've seen and digestion problems. So. It's really good for pain. Now, it's not just muscle pain like mm -hmm. sprains and strains and muscle aches. It's actually really, really good for visceral or internal pain. So intestinal pain, I've seen it help with gallbladder attacks. That's one of the recommendations I for tell people about liver concerns, whether it's cholesterol or a non-fatty liver disease, um, a fatty liver, uh, spleen problem. So we're always trying to help the body, uh, especially with Epstein-Barr, human herpes simplex one, is the virus that it's so important to work on the thymus gland, which is right behind the substernal notch here, and the spleen, which is the upper left quadrant down here in your abdomen. And this is one of the areas where we like to put pads. So the other thing that we have in the office, a little bit more invasive light therapy, is something called ultraviolet blood irradiation therapy, the cure that time forgot. And this is when we get an IV going, and then what happens is we extract uh, a little bit of blood, typically, you know, 50 to 60 ounces of, or excuse me, cc's of blood. We put it into a bag of saline. We do a little bit of um, oxygen into the bag with a titch amount of, of uh, heparin so that it doesn't clot. And then we run it past this light back into the body. And when we run the, the blood past an ultraviolet light, we think, this is our hypothesis, that there's a photon of energy attached to each red blood cell. And as that photon of energy circulates through the body, it's literally handing off, it's kind of like putting sunshine in your body. The, the paper that I really like to hand out to people, The Cure That Time Forgot, written by a mentor and a colleague and a hero of mine, Dr. Rowan, um, says you know that not only is it good for infection, it's good for inflammation, arthritis, it has some hematological effects, which means good blood effects, and there's relatively no side effects. It's something we've been using in the office for 15 years. And so, Gina, when you came into the office and you saw us hooking up people to this blood light machine, I just have to ask, like, what was your initial reaction? Um, I, so I was used to just drawing blood. So when I seen that, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, but it was actually really interesting. And Gina, you've been at the office with us for how long? It's been a little over three months. Okay, so three months. We haven't, you haven't done a ton of stuff in the IV room, even though you know how to get blood out of people and everything. But you see a lot of people that will get treatments on the IV side and they'll come over and the treatments are macular degeneration, Lyme disease, Epstein-Barr. We do some uh, cancer support therapy and we're trying to help people to be as healthy as possible if that's a concern. We also see a lot of inflammation. Almost every one of our patients has stomach problems. Mm -hmm. We're doing a program with Gina who manages the back office for us at the West Clinic where we are seeing people that are not their disease, they're beating their diagnosis. And Gina, literally, you see a pretty positive outcome every day. I do. And, really. and it's kind of jaw-dropping. Like, uh, I had a patient just today that said, hey, Dr. West, how is it to literally like have so many people get better. And part of me was like, hey, I should really celebrate that and recognize that. And the other part of me is like, well, that's just what happens here. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why things like that happen is because we have so many modalities and so many things that we're committed to helping people to get better. Some people respond really well to infusion therapy. Some people respond to injection therapy. A lot of people respond to oral nutritional therapy. And, and one of the things that we do in the office is this treatment here. So this is called a pulsed electromagnetic frequency or PMF machine. And, and a lot of times people say, well, I don't even know what it does except it's tinging. Well, what it's doing when it's tinging is it's putting little bits of magnetic pulses into the body that helps to give energy. And so some, give me some examples of some of the conditions that you've seen treated with this and some of the feedback. Um, so a lot of lower back um, problems is what and knees, I guess, and shoulders. So it's a lot of people that have stayed away from surgery and they use this after, usually after injections. Injection therapy that we're doing where we're trying to put vitamins and nutrients into the, into the area so they can get rehabbed. And then what happens is we come along with this pulse magnetic therapy. It helps to massage the nerves. It helps to get good energy into the system. Repair the tissue. And repair the tissue. And then one of my favorite things to do, and, and I like this because it's cool because I've been in there myself, but everyone, this is called a theta chamber. And a theta chamber is really important for us to help break up addiction patterns. And when we talk about addiction patterns, when Kelly first told me about this, 
I said, look, Kelly, I don't know if I'm equipped to take care of addictions. And I was thinking of prescriptive drug abuse, recreational drug abuse, alcoholism, chewing tobacco, some of the kind of classic uh, you know, addiction things. And what, I've, what she brought to my attention is, yes, that's an addiction, but guess what? She told me, Dr. West, I know you're addicted to something. I'm like, I am not. What are you talking about? And she said, you're addicted to technology. You're addicted to workaholicism. You're addicted to, and I was like, yeah, I guess I didn't like think of it that way. But getting people into this machine, what it does is it helps to get the body into a resting state and get the body basically into a state of theta. When theta happens, we think that there's a release of oxytocin, which is a, basically a hormone that when it's released, it helps to rewire the nervous system. It helps to flush bad habits and some other things. And no, it's not going to fix everything. It's helpful as an aid to do this. But Gina, you've seen this happen a lot. So first of all, walk me through how you do it. What, um, what happens? So I actually, it's the lid is usually open. And so um, I let them lay in it and then I hook them up. And, and the what, are you, what are you hooking them up to? Um, so we have some little binaural beats things that yes. go onto the, the ears. Then there's something that go over their eyes. What goes yes. over their eyes? Um, the <laughs> well, there's this little goggle thing with some lights that helps to basically yeah. give some impulses into the brain. And then there's a special type of blanket. Why do we have the weighted blanket? It's like giving them a big hug. Yes, so it just gives them a, a piece of comfort. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then what happens is we put in a special rotational guide and, the, and it starts to turn. And immediately everybody's like, I can't do that. I'm going to get motion sickness. <laughs> How many people get motion sickness? Uh, not very many. Like it's, it's, you actually don't know you're spinning. Yeah, so it slowly spins. So everybody that's like, oh my gosh, I can never do that. Please don't get your intelligence in the way of education or education in the way of intelligence, however that saying is, because it's worth it. Like you'll feel it a little bit when you turn, but when you start to rotate it like this, what happens, it starts to move some of the fluid in your semicircular canals. And then what happens is that movement's really important for rewiring those addiction patterns. And then when people get out of it, Gina, what are they telling you? Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> That's usually the response. <laughs> so cool or I is love the response. It, it's <laughs> relaxing. Almost everybody goes to sleep in there. So we got yep. sleep with the brain tab. We got mm -hmm. sleep with the pad therapy. We've got sleep um, with the theta t the chamber. And again, the way we help so many people, and when people call the office and they'll say, hey, I've got a liver problem, or I've got Lyme disease, I've got neuropathy, I've got low energy, I've got arthritis. The answer that we are telling people is, look, if you balance the body, if you put it in harmony with oral nutritional therapy, giving the people the right vitamins, and the right vitamins means the ones that they need, then the next thing we do is we want to retrain their nervous system with neural therapy. We want to give them high doses of vitamin C and magnesium and B6 to basically get to saturation points so it creates a, a concentration gradient, and then we want to break up addiction patterns and help their energy. And it's fun to work with Gina because I can just say, hey, do this, and she'll go back and she'll help us to massage the smooth muscle with the science surge, or we'll help to change the energy with the RTMS or the light therapy. And so Gina, in the back, is there a kind of one thing where you looked at it and just like, I can't believe that this is happening. Like you see repeated good outcomes. If you had to pick one therapy to do, like I know there's a whole bunch back there. What was the therapy that you'd pick? Um, so probably the ultrasound. That's probably the most liked. So the ultrasound, again, long wave ultrasound. Lots of people have ultrasounds, but it's typically short wave. Long wave ultrasound penetrates a little bit further. It vibrates the cells. It's like a cellular massage. And so if you've joined us, it's Jason and Gina, Dr. West and Gina on the West Clinic program every Thursday night, five o'clock. So we're talking about the therapies in the office that are allowing us to help people to beat their diagnosis because you're not your disease. There's a person in there. If you get everything balanced, um, good things happen. We really appreciate um, Gina coming on the show. She was sweating bullets. She was so <laughs> nervous. She's like, I don't want you to ask me a question I don't know. Don't make me look stupid. And we're like, no, no, that's not what it's about. We just want to share information so that if people are watching this or people wanting their friends or family to come check us out, we just wanted to give a real nice overview of what we do in the office. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, by the way, if you have a topic or a question or uh, something you want to do, will you put it down in the comments? Just put hashtag 
you know, stomach problems, hashtag horn or something like that. We'll pick up that hashtag. Our, our team will come and, and, and help us to create shows and information so that we can help you to achieve and maintain optimal health. Dr. Wes and Gina signing out. We'll see you guys next week.